Hi, I'm Adam Berninger, and I'm the curator for Truth. Can you walk us through sort of how you see the pieces engaging on an aesthetic level? So it was really interesting for the artists to look at their own natural building blocks that they use in their work and ask them to zoom in and to zoom out sort of conceptually, but I think also you can see how the artist took that formally as well. Of course, the benefit of seeing these longer series is you can kind of triangulate an idea over these 120 pieces. There's a lot of difference in what those building blocks are, but when you zoom out enough, there's becomes this common, literally thread sometimes, or common blocks or common elements that you see across the works. And so um, it's been interesting to discover the unexpected formal similarities between the seven projects in the show, um, but also uncover some of the similarities that might not be so formal, but kind of give you this similar sense of um, complexity and balance and uh, sort of like this organic order that comes in through these really intelligent systems. Here we're looking at the the seven number ones, but I think what's really interesting is getting into them closely and understanding a bit of what makes up each piece. And even the idea of viewing them at different scales accentuates the difference of perspective as you get in here. You get in here and, you know, this is press tube and Bezor's piece called cuneiform. And obviously cuneiform referencing parts of the origin of language and it's not so important what the components are literally saying, but this idea that it's a communication device, that this little bit of matter is, is communicating something in some language that humans might interpret or some entity might interpret, but there's an intelligence there in, in general that comes to life. And you might not see some of the patterns when you're looking up really close, but as you zoom out, you start to see the intelligence come into play with the automata and the triangular composition that's created and the groupings and the density patterns and you know all this stuff that um is going to change at different scales and i think you can get that in Charlotte dan's work which is totally different and where i think you come up close to cuneiform and it's this organic expression of language and order and structure underlying everything you come up close on Charlotte's work here and you see this network detail in here, this really intelligent system that's connecting, literally connecting the dots between different spaces, but that you, as you zoom out, you start to see how it's warped across different effects in the piece, these kind of cellular seeming things. And Tyler's work too, almost trying to, I think going back to the most basics of a grid structure and playing with how much you can shift the sense of scale in this. This one to me is maybe the most overt play on, I think it's somewhat unintentional, but the most overt play on this idea of powers of 10, these little squares that I want to go into and discover a new universe within it. And so there's some great textures and um, idiosyncrasies with the way that he's playing with the grid. But the more you go in, the more you discover. And I think that's apparent as you come out too. And it feels like almost a map of something much greater. You don't know if it's of a galaxy or something microscopic. Of course, all these pieces are just radiating light at us. And I love how Hal plays with light in his work, you know, and that's, that's a big part of his overall exploration and the works that we have seen from him. And, you know, these particles representing in some cases like almost cosmic light at a scale that could be massive, could be tiny. And so he takes a very scientific approach, really understanding the physics of the universe and how particles interact with each other. And he's taken that knowledge and allowed it to form these compositions that are um, akin to the creation of a universe, of our universe, basically recreating that effect of particle expansion and the chaotic results that come from it. Lisa's work too is, you know, using these, um, our, the resolution on the screen capture is not gonna get at the fine line work and overlaying of different scales. She's even playing with different scales and layers. And so looking at how similar math 
can create very different effects. And then what happens if those different effects are contrasting each other within a piece, I think is really a, a beautiful way of looking at, again, that self-similarity idea. So up close, this is a piece in itself and you zoom out. I think that's really beautiful. And you go out further and you get another edge. And so that little microcosm reveals that it's connected to another microcosm. And so, you know, with so many of these works, I kind of imagine that if that little rectangle wasn't framing us in, you can just keep going back, 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 back. And it would be both the same and it would be totally different. You know, you would have a different perspective on it, but it would be the same. And so I think that's a common theme to these works. Um, and you get to see sometimes in Lisa's work, this strong underlying grid and structure really accentuates the math and the, the precision that is behind the system that also feels so organic and kind of chaotic. You see that similarly in Ella's work here too, in a very different way. And so, you know, sometimes these works feel narrative in a way where you understand how how something evolves over time. And, you know, Ella's approach to really exploring a certain algorithm and how that algorithm can grow over time is a common thread in her work. And it really has come out here where starting with a very core uh, mathematical pattern, she's looking at what are the what are what is the cosmos that she's going to create with with this one little square again, and that cosmo could grow forever, and just keep going and create different densities. And so, I think a lot of the concept behind this piece is about focusing in on one moment in time, one perspective being about the freeze frame in this cosmos, knowing it's going to keep going. It came from somewhere. But here's a little moment to pause on the way the fabrics of this universe have kind of constructed itself around these circles and, you know, expansion effects. Really beautiful. David's work really embody the theme of the show across so many of his projects and his evolution as an artist, looking at that cross section between the cosmic and the microscopic and really the disorientation that he invites in his work that I think lends itself to really personal interpretations of what anybody's looking at is this, are these two tectonic plates coming together? Are these two cells breaking apart? Is this something part of a nebula? And when you zoom into the details on this too, start to understand how much is there, but it doesn't change your perspective, meaning it could still be cellular or cosmic. You just accept it for what it is, no matter the scale. I think that's the thing that's really compelling about this type of abstraction is you don't need to make a judgment out of it. You don't need to make necessarily a strong formal connection. I think in any one work, there's a tendency to try to find that familiarity. What is, oh, it's like a cellular structure. Oh, it's like, you know, something from space. And I think by bringing these works together, it starts to shed that even more because there is so much contrast between these, so many nuances between them that stop trying to look for those differences so much and just kind of accept a lot of the sameness between them. And as you go through different sets, I think that's a huge benefit from the way these feral file shows are releasing works is if really, um, encourages and enforces the perception of this as a united show and creates a new reading across the works that might not otherwise be there in a group show. And, um, you know, sometimes we have a lot of fun playing with even just the color similarities or formal similarities that we naturally found. The artists were not, the artists were not trying to coordinate their palettes or coordinate the forms that they were creating. This was all just natural happenstance that a lot of these pieces really spoke strongly to each other. Um, and so we've grouped some of these special sets so that collectors who might really like that sort of more extreme level of cohesion can find these pairings in one. It's funny because in my interviews with the artists, I, I'd say it looks like this, but it also looks like this. And so I found hearing you speak now, it's like I found myself really trying to like locate where I had or where I can place these works. And hearing that we don't really need to do that you can accept it and it is what it is at any scale and 
what you think it is right now might be different in the future. And something that struck me with the artists when I was speaking with them is that some of these pieces were developed over quite a long time, or the idea had been sort of marinating for quite some time. And this was finally their opportunity to really exercise that and to really manifest it through code. And so not only is it thinking about where you are, if you're zoomed in or zoomed out, but it's, it's sort of this also, the, there's a dimension of time, right? What do you see right now when you look at it? What do you see later when you look at it? What do you, you know, what might you see in the future? Um, I think is really interesting to think about too, these sort of time scales. Absolutely. You know, perspective changes over time. And I'm excited to look back on these works in a month and in six months and in 10 years and see something different. And um, again, that's the that's part of the excitement of these groupings is that you're really almost forced to take a wide view from the beginning. And so, um, you know, your mind is not just looking for an understanding of a work, but naturally everybody's mind tries to make connections, right? Like there's nothing wrong about different interpretations of this. And so this idea of scale is not just about big and small, it's really more about perspective and individual perspective and that your perspective out here or up close or back then and right now and in the future, they're all valid perspectives. You know, this is still just one of those moments in time. And so I see this not only as a, a show to encapsulate that thread of work in each of these artists um, trajectory, but it's also hopefully an interesting launching point to their next works and how they might explore those themes further so yes the con the, con the context of these works will change it will continue to change when i look back on these in a year it will be in the context of new works that each of these artists have created it will make me think of something different and that different thing will still be true amen <laughs> i'm smiling because it's so soothing in a sense to not have to be so tied to your opinion right now and to know that your perspective now will change in the future there's something really relieving about that especially in a time where it seems like you have to really you know it's like what you think is the only thing that matters because it's the only thing that can guide you and it's like actually no there are lots of ways that you can see this now and that you will see this in the future and that you might have seen it and well said you know so much what I realize is so much of what we might individually gravitate towards is fed from things that we have seen in the past, that we've had good experiences with the past, that we've just been inundated with. And so I think what's really interesting to consider are the things that anyone might consider good or beautiful to yourself, that that can change over time that that came from somewhere and that we can learn to appreciate new aesthetics, new ideas, new perspectives. And I think that's also a lot about what this show is trying to encourage. And even, you know, very much I learned stuff as seeing the artworks evolve, something that maybe didn't naturally hit home with me, the more I understood it and spent time with it, it reshaped my perspective on that work and what's even cooler about that is that I take that with me. And so again, in the future, I'm going to look at some other work that might not have resonated with me a couple of years ago is now going to be seen in a new light. So that's why I'm really always open to changing my perspective on works. Sometimes that happens on, on, on a work that I've seen a hundred times and it might just be my own new perspective coming from somewhere else. I might hear something from somebody else that talks about it or talks about something adjacent that then reminds me to go look at. So, you know, again, the the variety in these, we're looking here at, at versions that have this similar color palette. But when you go and look at, across the whole differences between these sets, um, I think there's something to learn from each of these series.